60 Minutes Rewind. The Shah of Iran savors the power and the worldwide attention his oil has brought him. Unlike most autocratic leaders, as his ambition and his military muscle have grown, so is his willingness to talk to foreign reporters. 60 Minutes made its yearly pilgrimage to the Shah's palace in Tehran to canvas the royal views on assorted topics. Among them, our presidential election. He clearly favors Ford, though he will not say so publicly. He thinks Carter fails to fully comprehend Iran's role in the defense of American interests. On the Middle East, the Shah is committed to a secure state of Israel, but he insists the Israelis must give back the Arab lands they conquered in 1967, and he believes the Jewish lobby in the United States helps breed Israeli intransigence on that matter. In fact, he says, American presidents and presidential candidates are too quick to do the bidding of the Jewish lobby. Surely, Your Majesty, you're not telling me that the Jewish lobby in the United States pulls the strings of the presidency? Not entirely, but I think even a little too much, even for Israel interests. You think the Jewish lobby in the United States is too powerful for the interests of Israel? I think so. Sometimes they are disserving the interests of Israel Explain. because they are, they're pushing around too many people. How do you mean pushing around? Well, pressuring. They have many means at their disposal. They are putting up pressure on many, many people. And at the end, I don't think that it, it will even help Israel. Why, if this is true, why would the President of the United States pay attention to that lobby? They are strong. Strong in what sense? They are controlling many things. Controlling what? Newspapers, medias, Your Majesty. Banks, finances, and I'm going to stop there. Well, now wait just a second. You really do believe that the Jewish community in the United States is that powerful? They make the media reflect their view of foreign policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. They do not report, we do not report honestly? Don't uh, mix things, please. I don't say the media. I say in the media they have people. Not the entire media. Some newspapers will only reflect their, their views, yes. No. The New York Times, for instance, is owned by the Salzberger family, who are Jewish. Are you suggesting that the New York Times is biased in its treatment of the question of Zionism, Israel's existence, the United States' relationship with the Arab world? I will have to put all the articles of the New York Times written on this subject and draw the conclusion. You can put this to the computer and it will answer you. What you're saying is that, yes, you do believe. Well, let's wait for the answer of the computer. Washington Post? The same. The networks? Less. I must say, you are speaking with your characteristic candor. Yes, if you like. I try to be candid. I have always been. He was even-handed in his candor. Next, he turned to the Palestinians. The Palestinians obviously had the sympathy of many, many people, many, well, almost all the countries in the world, prosecuted people, stateless people, uh, looking for a home or something. Yeah. You know, exactly like the sympathy that the Jews had when they were searching for a home. Right. But our good Palestinian friends must know that there is only a limit to where they can go and bully the world. Bully the world? Yes, by terrorism and blackmailing and this and that. You know perfectly well, Your Majesty, that the leaders of the Arab world find the Palestinians as much a problem almost as the Israelis do. Isn't that a fact? What I can say is that they should really open their eyes, reassert their situation. And if there is a hierarchy and someone there in command... Of the Palestinians, you mean? Of the Palestinians, to start a new policy, because the actual one is going to lead them nowhere. With whom do they really have understanding? 
with uh, Assad, with Sadat, with Hussein? That's a very good question. They have none with any of these leaders? Not to my knowledge. And they seem to be out of control? It seems so today. today and what about the Arab leader who supports the Palestinians, the terrorists, with his oil money, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya? He's crazy. You, you really believe that? Oh, yes. No doubt the man is absolutely irresponsible and crazy. We moved on to the subject of Iranian money and tales of monumental corruption, bribery, even in the royal family. Princess Ashraf is the Shah's sister. Let me quote to you from a piece in the Washington Post. A wealthy Iranian businessman says, not a truck can move anywhere in this country without a payoff going to Princess Ashraf. Who is this silly person who can believe that? Why would you imagine this kind of thing would find its way into print? First, you like to print those things. You newspaper people always must be sensational. And uh, you're satisfied. If one of your whipping uh, boys today seems to be us in this country. So you go for these things. But so many stories like this have proved to be true. They all were true except for my country. Grumman was true. Not here. Northrop was true. Not here. Then how are you so sure? How can you be utterly sure? Because you, you speak with such assurance hmm? that it is not still going on in other arms. The uh, arms I choose. All the systems I choose. There is no need for middlemen. And they're not bribing you? Well, uh, hopefully not. We turn to the Shah's secret police force, his FBI and CIA combined. They are called SAVAK, and they have a reputation for brutality. He acknowledged that he has SAVAK agents on duty in the United States. And they are there for the purpose of checking up on Iranian students? Checking up on anybody who becomes affiliated with circles, organizations hostile to my country which is the role of any intelligence organization. And they are there with the knowledge and consent of the United States government? I think it is. The deputy director of SAVAK, a man by the name of Parvis Sabeti, is reported to have castigated the FBI for not keeping a closer watch on Iranian exiles and student groups in the United States. And according to that same report, he says the CIA is no help at all. He said, oh yes, he, he has. Said he is also quoted as saying, we'd better not talk about this, but we are fully aware of the situation of Iranian students abroad, especially those working in international communist activities. Mm -hmm. So you do have Savak agents. Well, I hope so. In the United States. I hope everywhere to gather those informations. Mm -hmm. Now, when an outfit like the International Commission of Jurists comes here, Mm -hmm. and then comes out with a report saying that in spite of what you say, Your Majesty, mm -hmm. torture continues. How do they know? Well, they can't continue saying this. But you have, they have even uh, accused uh, the Great Britain of acting against the human rights. Now we're talking for the moment about your country. They are putting us in the same category. In other words, you're saying you do what every country does. Sure, If why torture not? is necessary, you torture. Not the torture in the old sense of torturing people, twisting their arms and doing this and that. But there are intelligent way, ways of uh, questioning now. Well, they talk about psychological and physical torture. Physical, I don't believe. I talked... Not anymore. Maybe in the old days, maybe. I talked just today to a man whom I believe, who told about torture. He was tortured? Yes. And you believe that he was tortured? Yes. How many years ago? Within, I want to be very careful, not yesterday. Ah, well, maybe. I don't know. The word has gone out to stop it. To stop what? Torture. But a long time ago, yes. How long ago? Well, I won't tell you, as you don't tell me.
The story will continue after this. Are you aware of a CIA psychological profile about you, sir? No, I must admit that it's the first time I hear that. Truly? Yes, what is it? Would you be interested in hearing what the CIA had to say? Yes, why not? Really? Yes, why not? I have your permission? Yes, sure. You won't send me to the Savak if I ask? Uh, no, I would spare you this terrible ordeal of going through torture. This secret study portrays the Shah as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. So how could I be your man, your agent? How do you mean? Safeguarding your interests. Well, it says that the Shah is an uncertain ally. His dreams of glory apparently... Oh, ah, I know. So you would like me to be your stooge? Do you want me to go on or shall I forget about this? Well, just uh, some uh, funny points, why not? So he went on to quote to him from the CIA profile. His dreams of glory, it said, apparently exceed his ability to finance them. When his oil revenues run out in an estimated two decades, he might use his new military power to seize some neighboring oil fields. Shall I go on or would you prefer that I stop, sir? Well, the question is that I have now that you mentioned, I have seen that appearing in papers, but I think it's lots of imagination in that. A criticism frequently voiced by American business people here particularly in the last year or two, is this, Your Majesty. Iran does not pay its bills on time. Goods are delivered, services are rendered, but they have to wait and wait for their money. Surely you don't have cash flow problems, Your Majesty. This is very new to me. Oh, I've heard this over and over again. Why don't they write to me? Well, perhaps, perhaps now that you're suggesting that they write to you, they will. Sure. They say months, months, and months go by. I can't believe that. There is no cash flow problem. Because you yourself confess that you are in deficit this year. I don't think so. I don't think so. But this is worth uh, looking after. And uh, at least for once you're very useful that through you we can reach these people. <laughs> and say, why don't they write to me? You, you say, at least for once, you are useful. Why? I I'm, I'm, confess, I'm curious. Why are you willing to sit and Be answer these questions? Because I like these kind of provocations. It gives me the opportunity of uh, cl clearing, cl clarifying things that unfortunately are said and not always answered. <laughs> 